please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome to this uh, special edition we have got. We have got the chairman of uh, Raymond with us, Mr. Gautam Singhania. Pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, the brand Raymond for the last close to around a decade, everyone believes that, in fact, you know, that's really class, that's pedigree when you're wearing a suit or any kind of fabric. Your take, what's your vision for the company from year on? I think at the core of it is product. And what you see why Raymond has gone from strength to strength is really the strong focus on product, coupled with the brand image that it's got today. So I think in the textile apparel space, we're really the number one guys. In the fabric space, clearly number one with no real number two. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, I think is really you know, uh, expanding this further uh, into rural areas mm -hmm. and also going up the value chain, like what you're seeing here in this lounge that you're sitting where this is our new um, make to measure lounge. It's a bespoke lounge and it's a, a unique concept that's never been done by anybody in the world. Right. And here we're trying to give an experience which is made to measure anything. So from shoes to jeans, track pants, shirts, trousers, jackets, and across fibers. So we're doing even cashmere and vicuna jackets, which is ultra high end. Leather accessories, khadi, ethnic wear, club wear, party wear, uh, 3D printed accessories. So we're really changing the game. And I think you know the only thing that's constant is change. Well, uh, you know, Mr. Singhania, you've been telling us about the brand. Something new is what you're throwing out to customers uh, as well. In the last couple of years, we've had a couple of challenges. One was GST, you had demonetization as well. But you've always told us that you believe in the India consumption story. Where do you see it headed from here? Well, I think India consumption, one, of course, is you go down the pyramid. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a big opportunity for us even within our operating market space. Yeah. If you just take the top 50 million consumers in India, how do we sell them more? Uh, that's real big consumption. That those numbers are very large. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the Indian consumption story has gone anywhere. You had the demon, you had the GST. I think GST is good long term. Yeah. And some of these uh, bitter pills, you've got to take and move on. So the consumption story is there. I don't think it's gone anywhere. Well, you have commissioned a couple of facilities, uh, one in Amravati, the other one in Ethiopia as well. So, you know, Capex is something that you've put on the table. Now it's time to see revenues as well coming in from the Raymond Group. Uh, what kind of a number are you looking at? You must be having some targets uh, in mind. And importantly, you know, people are worried. Wool prices have moved up, cotton prices have moved up. But you would have seen many of such cycles. Your take on some of these raw material costs. So, you know, I think raw material costs are cyclical. Mm -hmm. And they affect commodity manufacturers more. While they do affect us, but when you're a branded product, it's easier for you to absorb. Yeah. So I'm not saying that higher costs are justified or, or good, but it's easier for us to absorb. Also, when you get higher costs, uh, you then look at your own cost structure, mm -hmm. and it forces you to, to bring in more efficiencies. As far as you know, investment cycle and debt, et cetera, because I guess that's what something you're going to ask, is that we're at the end of our investment cycle. So we had Ethiopia come in, uh, which was primarily to take advantage of the US and Europe, yeah. because we're big garment exporters. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Amravati, because we've, you know, like, uh, if you follow the company, we had only first wool and poly wool. Then at some point, we started doing poly viscose, which became a big line. Mm -hmm. Then the shirting has become a big line. Yeah. Now the future bets are linen, khadi, make to measure, ethnic wear, these are big verticals for us. And we believe if we get into a market segment, mm -hmm. we must have some manufacturing sure. for the same. Because that's where the technology is developed, that's where the high value products are made. And that's really given Raymond the strength over the last 95 years to make the best products in the world. At one point of time, the barometer of success was the share price. The stock would have doubled in the last three years. Where do you see your shareholding go? And are you a buyer at these levels? Well, you know. The fact that I bought shares in the market and it's a disclosed information yeah. is I believe there's great value in it. Number two, I believe in my company. So the fact that I'm willing to invest in my own share and I have bought at levels higher than what it is today yes. clearly answers your question. 
So do you, do you have a particular target that you want to take the promoter shareholding to? That's an internal target I won't discuss. <laughs> but you are a buyer at these levels. Well, I have bought. So whether I'm a buyer today or not is, is not for me to say, but the fact is I bought at 900 levels, 950 levels. A thousand rupees I bought, so that's all disclosed. So if I'm a buyer at thousand, I'm certainly a buyer at 750. Absolutely, all right. So you're a buyer at around uh, at these levels, and you're believing in the company. But there's been, you know, a particular segment of the market or parts of the market that are getting a little nervous, and that's where you've seen the share prices down nearly around 30, 35 percent. So one school of thought is, well, the valuations caught up. The other school of thought is maybe the business is not really being valued. You you have the Thane land with you. You have an FNCG business as well. So what are the plans? Let's focus on the Thani land first. You have told us that, you know, okay, 20 so fun, Let me answer your question. Yeah. Fundamentally, we don't really look at the stock price. We do the right thing. Absolutely. The stock price will follow. We're not here to, to make the stock price go up and do things accordingly. Right. That's not how we work. We want to do the right thing and focus on our business. And I honestly don't understand the stock market. Yeah. One day it goes up, one day it comes down, nothing changes between 24 hours. That's true. Right. There's not something uh, like that. So, but... Having said that, we will do whatever it takes, which I've repeatedly said, to create shareholder value. Yeah, and you have repeatedly said that as well in terms of Thane land, non-core assets, as well as growing the FMCG business. So you have said that in the past, but can we look at some timelines? You know, you would be, so ha would be having some timelines in mind, isn't so it, the, Mr. Sigani? The board has approved a 20-acre pro uh, project. Yeah. Uh, the details will be presented. Yeah. But, you know, you have to understand with land in this country, all land comes with issues. True. I think 99% of this land in this country has got issues. Right. So we've really spent the last two, three years cleaning up all these parcels of land. Yeah. Now, you don't see that. Mm. You probably wonder what's going on. Mm. But let me assure you that value creation is paramount on my mind. Right. Now, every time I go and get a permission, I don't come and tell you. I'm not obliged to tell anybody that I've got this permission or not. Yeah. But... The fundamental issue is that I am the largest shareholder in the company. Right. Uh, you know, you're talking about permissions. I think it's 140 acres, right? All permissions have come through in, ter well, in terms of that land? We're in the right direction. The 20-acre project that you're talking about, Mr. Singhania, comes with some capex as well of around 300 crores approximately. So we'll keep that aside for now, and we'll wait for you to unlock value out there. But with the remainder of the land, is there a possibility of sell-out of maybe 10 acres, 20 acres in like the I next couple of years? Is there a possibility? Like I said, we'll do whatever it takes to create shareholder value. A and the time span in the next couple of years? We are, all, we are open to it every day. We look at it every day, every week. That's the top priority. I'm not able to tell you exactly what we're doing yeah. because nothing is done. You know, like they say, it's not done until it's done. Okay, so let's keep the land then at the side. You said you have, uh, you know, you have a roadmap for it, so we'll wait by for that to play out. Let's talk about the other non-core assets, the auto space, the hardware business. Now, those businesses, they have yeah, been doing, doing very well. They're doing well. Extremely well. But at uh, some point of time, would you be looking at a buyer for show me, show me the money. I must say, I've, I have demonstrated in my career that I'm not averse to buying and selling businesses. Show me the right price and I'm happy to sell it today. But we have heard that before. Uh, Show has, me the money. Are ha, you willing to buy it? <laughs> has, has someone shown you, shown you the money so to now? If, if somebody had shown me the money, it would have been gone by now. See, listen, when you buy or sell something, mm. at a particular price, you'll sell it. Right. But you might sell it. You might be looking at other options. Right. The fact is, philosophically, it's on our radar. Yeah how to skin that asset or monetize it or whatever we have to do. Selling is one option. Right. That doesn't mean we're not looking at other things. Could, could the other things include a demerger of business? And it, could ask, it could be anything. Okay. Uh, okay. The, the fact is, I'm not at liberty to tell you what we're doing. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean we're not looking. True. Sometimes these things take longer than you expect. But the fundamental issue is that we are fully focused on creating value. Absolutely. All right. So f fully focused on enhancing shareholders' value. That's the message that you're sending out to the audience. That's uh, been a consistent message. That, and if you actually don't look at the last two months, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why when something negative happens and we look, take a very short-term view. And yeah. Let's take three years. I took over shareholder control of this company in 2015, February. Yeah. Right. We're in 2018. Look what the stock was then. Look what it is today. Yeah. Even at a depressed value from what the peak was, yeah. it's still done better, almost as good or better than the market. So I'm taking, I'm taking a three-year view then. Uh, you know, what about you? You're assuring your shareholders that we'll see some action I on Thani land? I on can't assure anything. 
because can you assure me what the political situation <laughs> will be? Can you assure me what Trump is going to do? Mm. I mean, today we live in a world which is governed a lot by external factors. Right. We're not living in an isolated world. So my intention is correct, but I can't assure anything. Okay. All right, let's uh, focus on a smaller part of your business, your FMCG business. You've been quite bullish over there. It's doing roughly around 500 crores approximately. What's the roadmap there? Do you have a particular target in mind in terms of scalability of that business? Is there a possibility you list that business separately? You must be having a plan, right? We had a partner in JK Ansel. We bought the partner out. Yeah. The FMCG business, we bought in a whole new management team. We put a focus into it. We revamped the board. We have an external chairman. This is the only promoter listed company, holding company, where a promoter has stepped off as chairman of the company. Right. Why are we doing all this? Rajiv Bakshi has become chairman of the company. We have an independent board. I'm one director. So now that company is in a different space. It's got its own growth plans. Hmm. Now, the chairman of the company runs that company. And he's a hardcore FMCG professional. The three-year and five-year growth plans are work, being worked out. But eventually, the bottom line is the same. How do Raymond shareholders, shareholders get value out of this? Right. We're in the business of making money. Right. That's what we've got to do. What about the debt in the books? On a quarterly basis, you're spending around 50 crores or thereabouts as interest cost. Yes. So the debt in the book should be roughly around 2,000 crores, very, very approximately. You'll have a target in mind, right? Uh, to bring down that debt? See, the, we're at the end of the CapEx cycle. Yeah. Your CapEx in Amravati and Ethiopia, mm -hmm. that took the debt up. True. Moving forward, we're not going to any CapEx plant. Mm. Your cash flows will become positive, and your debt will come down from one from that. Number two, getting rid of NPAs, non-performing assets. Yes. It, whatever we can get rid of. Supposing you get rid of the auto component, it will bring it down. If you're able to monetize some of the land, that will bring it down. True. Efficiencies better working capital management, et cetera, all will bring debt down. So it's in the right direction. I don't think we're alarmed about our debt. Mm -hmm. uh, we might be 2,000 crores and not 2 lakh crores. Or like, but we want to be debt free over a period of time. How, how long? How long would that be? You want it's to be debt free? It's very yeah. difficult to say. I mean, today if I monetize the land, tomorrow I'll be debt free tomorrow. If it takes three years, it'll take three years. But the, the intent is there to be that, that direction. So give us some roadmaps, uh, you know, 2,000 It's crores. very difficult. I think you're trying to pin me down on a timeline, mm -hmm. but I am averse to that. I'd rather undercommit and over-deliver. All right. Uh, and I also understand how land transactions work. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've seen how deals happen. I mean, I've done, in 99, I did three deals, cement, filament, and poly uh, steel. Yeah. And one deal took 45 months to do, and one took four and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. The cement deal was done in literally four and a half minutes. So. I've seen the whole spectrum. The filament took two, two and a half years. So all I can say is that we are in the right direction and we know what we have to do. I don't want to put a timeline on it. You're talking about free cash flows, right? When do we see that turn positive? Uh, you have said that FY20, that's the timing when you're looking yes, at? Yes, because you're at the end of the CapEx cycle now. So that's on the cards. Yeah. F positive cash flows and FY20 is on the cards with margin uptake as well. That's something that you've set out. We have seen it on your presentations as well. But that's on the cards. Yes. You know, a lot of your shareholders out there, for example, the institution holding from the time in the last three years that we were talking about, the institution holding went all the way to around 30%. But in the last couple of quarters, we have seen that that's come down a tad bit. So there is some disappointment. It's right? not disappointment. What you see is disappointment. Some of them have had to do reallocation of their funds because of guidelines. Yeah. So they've had to rejig their funds. Absolutely. And Mr. Singhana, you've mentioned this in the past, that you believe that Raymond is going to be you know, a blue chip company some analysts on the street and a lot of uh, you know shareholders have compared it to the likes of Britannia to the likes of a page industries and they get you know real high multiples and high pedigree managements as well take us through your plan for that you know we're already at around 5,000 crores in terms of market capitalization as you said the market cap has doubled over the last couple of years so what's the growth plan how do you make this a blue chip company See, it again comes back to my same answer. You got to do the right thing for the company. So each business has a plan. Yeah. Now, let me give you an example in the textile business. Whilst we have the legacy business, which is the fabric business, yeah. which grows at a particular growth rate, that doesn't satisfy us. Right. We have the new verticals, ethnic wear today. Right. Very big, we have a big potential now. I mean, if you take the ethnic wear market, it's a 5,000 crore market. Mm -hmm. Now, what can I get 20% of it? 
Is that a possibility? Why not? I'm, I'm dreaming 25%, 30%. That's what my dream is. Why not? If I have the brand, mm -hmm. I have the supply chain, I have the product, have a look at our product. I mean, you'll be surprised at the product range. You'll say, oh my God, Raymond is making this. I never dreamt of it. Come and see our trade shows. We are the, we are the largest trade show ever in the world today. Mm -hmm. 20,000 articles are given every season. Now, whether, see, let me give you a historical experience that will explain to you my optimism. Right. Our shirting business used to be very, very small. And then we just put a focus on it. We put up a plant, we got the best products, and it's a 600 crore vertical today. Now, if shirting can do that, we're seeing it with linen. Mm -hmm. Linen has gone from zero, I think this year we'll do six, seven million meters of linen. And we'll be the largest OTC linen brand. I mean, we sell almost uh, 15 million shirts across the counter. So we actually sell more fabrics that get converted into a shirt than the ready-made sales of all our brands put together. You take made to measure as a vertical. It took five years to prove the concept, mm -hmm. but then the growth is exponential. Sure. Now, if you see this lounge that you're sitting in, this is the next level. Now here, we're selling jackets for 15 lakh rupees. A Vikuna jacket is 15 and a half lakh rupees. So we're changing the game everywhere. You take Khadi. Why can't Khadi become a 2,000 crore business? It's a fabric by the people of India for the people of India. And nobody else can own this proposition. I mean, the Khadi ad that we did in the first 30 hours got 16 million hits on, you, on social media. I just woke us up and said, hey, what's going on here? Why are we doing 10, 20, 30 crores of Khadi? Why can't we do 2,000 crores of Khadi? Right. Is there a market there? For every suit I sell, I can sell so many trousers so that I can sell so much shirting. Why can't I triple my shirting business today? Yeah. But the concept is proven. So there are multiple growth options. Some take X time, some take Y time. You know, Mr. Singhane, the, uh, the picture that you're p throwing to us is if I put it in cricketing parlance, you've got the best players in the dressing room. Now they need to come out there and all play the innings of their lives. So no one's ever uh, you know, questioned the players in the dressing room. But how do they come out there and play that one innings that takes Raymond to the next level? The game has started. You're going to have to wait and watch. You were telling us about the e ethnic wear, and you're telling us about a store like this as well. How many such stores do you want to, you know, set up? So this all, one, yeah. this one went from concept to completion in 45 days, okay. and that's the speed we're working at. Ethnic wear, you know, it's an evolution. I don't want to really tell you exactly what we're doing, mm -hmm. but I think there's a big headroom there. I mean, if, if, you're, if it's a 5,000 market, 5,000 crore market size for ethnic wear, even 10% is 500 crores. And today, what's the size of it? 30, 40 crores for us. Okay. You know, you were t telling us about we have a big general election that's coming up uh, in the next year itself. Uh, your view in terms of, you know, the government initiatives, you were telling us, I've read in the past as well, the Make in India theme, that's what fit into uh, the Amravati project uh, as well. So the measures that the government has put on the table, and what more would you like in terms of support coming in from the government? See, I think one of the major issues that the government needs to look at is, is the labor laws. Mm. Uh, it's a difficult one, yeah. but the minute you bring some discipline into labor laws, you make the industry more efficient. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a crying need of the hour. Right. What will happen in 2019, I'm not a political pundit, I, I have no idea. I will go and cast my vote and whatever happens, Raymond as a company will continue to run and do business in India. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, another factor that's been, uh, that's been playing on the minds of many is that Mr. Singhania has been that flamboyant person with, uh, you know, the fast cars, maybe the jets, all that's behind now. Are we looking at value creation? And more importantly, it's separated, right? From the business, See, the business is separate, and personal expenditure, that's separate. That's completely separate, but my image is what you guys make it. <laughs> I guess you decided to focus more on my business now, so I guess that's where the focus is. But having said that, I'm also now on the FIA internationally. My passion for cars is not going to go. I don't hide it behind anybody. I enjoy my cars, so what's wrong with that? I have a passion. Everybody has a passion for something. Sure. I am now passionate about doing a lot of good for motorsport for India. Yeah. I have been honored by being elected onto the World Motorsport Council. Uh, can it do business for the group? Of course it can do business. It's, it, uh, we already started getting business in various aspects because of my association with FIA. 
uh, because it opens up doors, you meet people, that's what, so it's something. I think the other part of me, you know, on a fundamental level that I got in, a lot of my time is going into FI. Right. And it helps me continue with my mission of professionalizing the company. I'm not sitting in the air. I'm not insecure. I have enough things to do. You know, most people don't give up because they don't know what they'll do with it. So I might as well drive my cars and, and get involved with the FI and do all my passions in life and let the right people run the business. Well, you know, so we perfectly take that point. But that's all on a personal front, right? That's not mixing the business, isn't it? So, you know, you've got to have your time for your business. You need to dedicate as much or as little time as required for your business. Yeah. Once you have decided what you want to do with the business, we have clearly professionalized the organization. We have clearly set targets, there's a whole, we've set the whole governance structure into place, and then there's time for me to do the other stuff. If I was not doing other stuff, I would continue to be making their life miserable here. And you know, life is about finding a balance between business, family, and personal. I'm not apologetic about it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I found myself a great balance. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Singhania. Thanks so much for speaking to Thanks. us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, the broad takeaways then from what Mr. Singhania had to say was that he's looking to enhance shareholder value. He's looking at debt reduction from here. And if you find a buyer for the non-core assets, well, they're yours. They're on the block. CNBC 